Some time back I made this video explaining what design by contract is and why I think this is an essential concept every code base should apply. In short, design by contract is about defining pre and post conditions as well as invariants to make assumptions and expectations explicit in the source code. This results in code which fails fast in case of an issue which makes these issues easier to find and to fix. Design by contract also improves changeability and maintainability of the code as the intention of the author is precisely expressed inside the code itself. When it comes to applying this concept, I suggested to keep it rather simple and pragmatic and use such a small class in every project instead of coupling your code base to some heavyweight tool like PostSharp or AspectJ or any other aspect oriented programming framework. I still believe design by contract is a must for clean code. And I still believe that having such a small contract class in every project is the best implementation. However, this implementation has some minor smells, which we can now eliminate thanks to a new feature in .NET 6, as we will see in a second. Smell number one. In order to have the argument name part of the exception message, the name of the argument has to be given explicitly as an additional parameter. This obviously violates the dry principle and can be considered as a smell. In .NET 6, the argument null exception class provides a new API, throw if null, which works without this additional parameter. If we run the test, we can see that the exception still contains the parameter name which was null, address in this case. So how does this work? If we check the implementation of this new API, we can see a new attribute, caller argument expression. This attribute instructs the compiler to capture the expression passed to the specified parameter argument in this case, and to store it in the parameter param name, which is then used to build the exception message. We could now use the new throw if null API on the argument null exception class instead of our contract class, but I would suggest to apply the new feature to our class to handle pre and post conditions in a consistent way in our code base. So let's do this. We navigate to our contract class, to the requires not null API, and provide the new attribute, the caller argument expression. We also have to specify the argument to which this attribute should apply. Argument in this case. And we also have to specify a default value for the argument name argument. When we now go back to the person class, we can remove the additional parameter. And if we run the tests again, we can see that the argument name is still part of the exception message. But there is more. If we check the implementation of the contract.requires API, we see that it takes a simple bool value together with a message. This means the quality of the exception message fully depends on the correctness of the message provided to this API. This not only results in a violation of the dry principle, but the content of the message can also easily get inconsistent with the actual condition during some refactoring. To improve this API, let's try to apply the caller argument expression attribute here as well. So we again add the attribute, we specify the argument to which it should apply, and we provide a default value. In the person class, we now remove the explicitly specified message and use the debugger to check the exception message generated. As we can see, the exception message contains the complete expression we have specified. Awesome! The new feature, caller argument expression, not only makes it more convenient to use the concept design by contract, but also makes the error message less error prone and more expressive in many cases. I will definitely update my design by contract implementations in my projects to benefit from this new cool feature. And if you are still not convinced that this simple concept of design by contract can improve the quality of your code a lot, then check out this video.